This week we're exploring South Dakota with South Dakota Tourism to show y'all the best hikes, things to do, places to see, and delicious food to eat all across this beautiful and diverse state. For the last five days, we have been hanging out in the western part of the state, from hiking in the Black Hills, exploring Badlands National Park, fitting our van into a small tunnel on the Needles Highway, and visiting classic tourist attractions. It has been an incredible trip so far. And today we're making our way east towards Sioux Falls, a four hour drive along I-90 from Badlands National Park with a bunch of fun stops along the way. Our original plan was to take it easy on the four hour drive to Sioux Falls, but we did a little bit more research and we found some interesting things along the way. Hopefully some sunflowers, some sculptures, some food, a corn palace. So we decided to turn it into a road trip adventure. But if the weather stays like this, we may not be able to see any of the roadside attractions. We are fueled up in more ways than one. We've got diesel and no road trip adventure is complete without gas station coffee. So we're ready to hit the road. We made it to our first stop. That sculpture somewhere across the highway. I'm not sure if you can see it in the camera, but we're hopefully gonna give you a better look right now. So the sculpture is called Skeleton Man Walking a Skeleton Dinosaur, and it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a skeleton statue walking a skeleton dinosaur. We tried to find out what the significance of it was or why it was created, and we couldn't really find much. I think it's just one of those quirky roadside attractions. It's located off of I-90. I-90 is over there, right by the 1880 town, which is, this, which is a tourist attraction with, I believe, like 30 buildings from 1880 to 1920. It's closed right now, so we can't check it out, but it does look pretty cool from what we've seen. To actually access this sculpture, I think you might need to go to the 1880 town, or you can just see it while you're driving by. I-90 right here is like 80 miles per hour, so we have been told, and just from common sense, like don't just pull off on the side of I-90, that might be dangerous. So we found this little frontage road or this little country road off to the side of it, and we're gonna try to fly up the drone to show you guys a closer look. fun one of the coolest things I've ever drone <laughs> and weirdest things and randomest things but I think I got some really good stuff we're back on the road and our next stop is to hopefully go see some sunflowers something we did not know is that South Dakota is one of the top producers of sunflowers in the world and they're normally in full bloom around mid-august so I think we're a little late to see them at their best but we're hoping we can still find some fields with some decent looking ones. So there's not one specific area that you can put in the map to go take you right to them. They're kind of spread all over, but we hear that a really good area is on Highway 34 west of Pierre. So far we've just been driving on I-90 all day, but we're popping up here to this Highway 34 right by Pierre, and then we'll hop back down and do 90 the rest of the way to Sioux Falls. We found some sunflowers. It actually didn't take that long. We were driving maybe five or 10 minutes down the road. I'll put a pin of where we actually stopped. Like we said, it's there's not always a guaranteed spot. I think it does change year to year, but this could be a good starting point for you if you come in the future. They're uh, a little wilty and dead looking, but there's so many. So from afar, it just looks yellow. So you can't tell that they're all dead from afar. Up close, they're kind of dead, but they're still so pretty. This is crazy. I don't think we've ever 
been to a sunflower field before. This is it's just really beautiful. I'm no sunflower expert, but what I've always thought was that the sunflowers always face the sun and chase the sun all across the day, but we've been driving around South Dakota and we've seen sunflower fields not facing the sun, so we were kind of confused. But what we've learned was that the young ones, they face east and they chase the sun all across and face the sun until the west and then overnight they turn east again ready for the sun to come back up and then the mature ones they are always stuck facing the east i've never seen sunflowers this big before and this big area in the middle which I just googled it. I think it's called the disc florette is humongous it is probably as big as my face and That's what I was gonna say. it's it crazy <laughs> if you're visiting South Dakota in the summertime you have to go check out the sunflower fields especially if you're visiting between early to mid August when they're probably looking their best but even partially dead they still looked really beautiful we have about a two hour drive to our next stop and we'll be changing time zones. Fun fact for you, the time zone changes from mountain to central time in the middle of South Dakota. We stopped at this rest area near the town of Chamberlain, which is on the Missouri River, to see this statue, the Dignity Statue. It's a 50-foot stainless steel structure that honors the perseverance, courage, and wisdom of the Lakota and Dakota people. The sculptor Dale Lamphere used three Native American models aged 14, 29, and 55 to perfect the face of Dignity. The statue is wearing a dress patterned after a too high native dress of the 1850s. She's also holding a quill featuring 128 stainless steel blue diamond shapes designed to flutter in the wind and glisten in the sun. And at night there are LED lights that cause the diamonds to glow in the night sky. The Dignity statue is a great stop if you're driving along I-90. You need to go to the bathroom, stretch your legs, let your dog roll around in the grass. And the statue itself is absolutely beautiful. Magnificent. It's so magnificent. Huge and cool. And then the views around it are also so pretty. We've been kind of driving on just flat or rolling hill farmland, I would say, yeah. for a while. So it was nice to see a river and see some something else besides flatness. <laughs> <laughs> but now it is time to get some food. We are starving. It's it's one o'clock. We've changed an hour later, so it's noon to us, our bodies, I guess. But it is <laughs> time to get food because we are starving. So we're getting a little hangry, you guys, to be honest. So we got to get food fast before we like. <sighs> <laughs> We made it to the town of Mitchell, South Dakota, which is about an hour west of Sioux Falls. And our original plan for lunch today was to go to this place called Murdo Drive-In. It's a little bit, or quite a bit west of where we are now, but they unfortunately closed for the season. So we were super bummed yesterday, just frantically trying to figure out where to eat instead because we've kind of been in the middle of nowhere a lot of the drive today, so the options are pretty limited. But then we were looking at Mitchell and we found this spot called El Columpio, which means the swing in Spanish. Fun fact, they have cool little swings you can sit on inside. And we figured tacos are a great plan B. They're a great plan A, C, D, E, F, G. They're always great. So we came here and got tacos. So we both got tacos de barbacoa. So it's a, uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's a uh, pork and beef mixture. So uh, I guess they stew it or somehow they cook it. And then the tortilla, they dip it in the juice and then cook it, fry it on the uh, 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 stove as well. Came with guacamole, coarse rice and beans. I'm so freaking hungry. We're gonna go all in on this right now. Mm. Similar to the Indian food the other day, when you think of South Dakota, you don't really think of Mexican food, but this is freaking bomb, it's delicious. So we read an article actually earlier uh, that listed all the uh, best taco spots in every state, and this place won for South Dakota. So when we saw that, that also reconfirmed our decision to go here. But this thing is awesome. There's so much flavor in the meat. The uh, the taco's a little soggy, but it's uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if it's supposed to be like that. But it's really good. And yeah, just this is there's there's tons of flavor in this. It's kind of spicy. It's just like spicy heat wise and flavor wise. It's just... <laughs> 
so juicy. There's melted cheese in there. So I got like a big glob of melted cheese. Mm. It is so flavorful. Wow, yeah, the tortilla's a little soggy. That's the only thing I would change, but the meat is so good. The cheese is good. The flavor is really good. I don't know if we're just like really, really hungry because we are, but I think this is actually like a really, really good taco. And they gave us free chips and salsa, so plus 10 in our book. <laughs> All right, we're going to devour this now. After this uh, segment, we'll be much happier. <laughs> we are much happier now, but we are absolutely stuffed. We are on the edge of a food coma, but it was so dang delicious. The chips, the salsa, the tacos, the guac, the rice and beans, everything was top notch, excellent. But now it's time for the real reason we came to Mitchell, South Dakota, the world's only corn palace. Welcome to the world's only corn palace! The world's only corn palace is probably one of the most popular tourist attractions in South Dakota and it gets about 500,000 visitors a year. Every year they pick a theme and they palatially redecorate <laughs> it with naturally colored corn, grains, and other grasses and it turns out to be the agricultural <laughs> showpiece of the world. But it's not just a tourist attraction, it actually houses like concerts, basketball tournaments, Any kind graduations, of event you can think prom, of. so it's really cool to look at and it's a cool like cheesy or corny <laughs> <laughs> tourist spot, but it also actually serves a purpose to the town. I was trying to find out how many husks of corn that actually go into this whole design and I couldn't find that number, but as you can see here there's kind of a, a grain grassy skirt and then up there where there's actual designs you can see like green looking corn, black corn, yellow corn, red corn, all sorts of corn to make those images. So this year's theme for the Corn Palace was South Dakota homegrown. So on this side, we have Crazy Horse. On the back, we saw Mount Rushmore. There's a corn version of the Corn Palace. It's a cornception. There was also, I think, a political figure of South Dakota's on the side as well and some other stuff. So that's the theme. And then every August, at the end of August, they change the theme out. So this is gonna be torn down very soon and then they're gonna replace it and the new theme will be up in October. We needed a little bit of an afternoon pick-me-up, so we were gonna go to the spot in the main little downtown area of Mitchell called Elixir Roastery. It's a local coffee roaster, but then they were closed. Womp womp. So we looked up where else to get coffee in town that's actually open right now, and we found a place called Hot Shots, and we did something naughty. We got a, a bunch of sugar with a side of coffee. <laughs> We got some Frappuccinos. Yeah. They said it was buy a large for the price of a small today. It's hot out there, yeah. So we couldn't uh, not get the large, but I got a caramel Frappuccino. Oh my God. It was an information overload on their menu. It was really hard to decide, but so I got the Heath flavor, like Heath bar flavor. They both sound cool. really good. Yeah, heck yeah. And we got whipped cream. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's so good. Uh, we were both kind of like, ice cream kind of sounds kind of good. And we were just gonna stick to coffee, and we saw this stuff. It's like a hybrid. So we got both. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's no ice cream in it, but it's very sweet. <laughs> we're gonna enjoy these during our 35 minute drive to our final stop for the day, which also happens to be our home for the night. we are staying at Porter Sculpture Park which is a sculpture park that's just off of I-90 and at one point it was named the number one roadside attraction in South Dakota. And the reason we get to stay here tonight is because they are a member of Harvest House as are we and we talked about Harvest House on our alpaca vlog so go check that out for more information. But long story short 
RVs and vans can pay a yearly fee to access these different harvest host sites and you get to stay the night for free as long as you support the business and anyone can visit Porter Sculpture Park. Mm -hmm. It's just $10 a person to visit. So we're going to walk around and explore and then we're going to sleep here tonight. There's over 50 sculptures here at the park and Wayne Porter who is the sculptor and I'm pretty sure he lives on site here. The way he makes these is really interesting. He doesn't do any calculations, make any drawings, any kind of plans. I think he just gets it in his head and he just starts putting together. It's just really fascinating how how awesome and how well put together they are based off of no preparation or planning or anything. I'm just so impressed that someone created all of this. These pieces are huge and they're detailed and they're colorful. They're just really awesome. So as I mentioned before, he doesn't do any measurements or calculations or drawings beforehand. So this one, I think it's one of the earliest ones or first ones he put here. I think he built it in three pieces, the, the head and then the two horns. And so the uh, crane operator who was out here to put it all together, he asked him, he said, uh, did, you, did you do all the measurements and calculations? Is this gonna work? He said, no, but it'll work, it'll work. We keep thinking we're finding our favorite one and then we'll just walk a little bit farther and find one that's even cooler or we like better. And this one, this big bull's head, is probably the most famous of them all. You can definitely see it from the highway. We saw the horns coming from the west, west eastbound. <laughs> the direction we came, we could see the horns behind a hill, it's that big. But then you come in here and there's like a, a bat and there's a dragon, not a real bat, and a dragon and there's this demon Sweet. thing and so many little details, just the, attention to detail and the thought that goes into all of these is so impressive like the structures themselves are impressive but then just seeing all of the little details just make them makes them even cooler on the information on the outside he says this is the creature from the black lagoon They're also fun to walk around and look at and also read about the poems. They're just all really creative and every one of them is kind of different and unique from each other. Yeah, I keep, I have, I'm having a hard time picking a favorite because they're all really, really interesting and different from each other. I think the dragon ones really get me. The, the cross with the dragons and the flowers is a cool combo to me for some reason. But this, this might win is the most unique place we've ever slept for sure. Yeah. <laughs> After 330 miles and seven stops, our cross South Dakota road trip has come to an end. On our driving days, we normally just book it to the next destination, and that's, that was our plan for today. Just drive the four hours, the most direct route there. We ended up doing a five hour route, but it took us probably close to 10 hours because of all the stops we made. And I'm so glad that we took the time to do this drive slow. We were kind of driving through, to be honest, like the middle of nowhere, South Dakota. And it's probably one of those drives many people just rush through, mm -hmm. but we found so many interesting things along the way. And I'm, I'm just glad that we actually took the time to do it slow today. And tomorrow is going to be our last day in South Dakota. We are going to explore Sioux Falls. We've got some yummy eats and some fun things to do. So it should be a fun, yummy day. <laughs> it's a calm palace. It's Valparaiso. We'll make you corny.